Hey everybody, it's Dr. Blake, the cooking doc. We've got a really special recipe for you. Today we're gonna make something that takes a little bit longer and we're gonna make a vegan bolognese. Typically, a bolognese has a lot of meat in it, right? It's got beef, it's got pork, sometimes it's got veal, and that's the way that you develop these uh, rich, robust, creamy flavors. You let them cook over a long period of time. But the problem with that is that all that red meat and all that fat is not good for you, right? And so it's real important for us to take foods that are high in saturated fat or really meat heavy and make them taste good. So bolognese is a perfect one to do. And our secret ingredient is gonna be mushrooms. So let's make that recipe and let's make it totally vegan. So if you've ever had a vegan recipe that you kind of took a meat recipe, made it a vegan recipe, you often notice that the final result is flat. Not a lot of flavor. And you're like, man, why did I go vegan in the first place? This is not nearly as good as the meat sauces. So we are gonna to try to avoid all of that today. And we're gonna use layer upon layer upon layer of flavor and really build that out so it tastes unbelievable. So we've got an onion and I'm going to chop one whole onion. So we do want our onion to be chopped into fairly similar pieces as the carrot and celery we're gonna use. Bunch of slices sideways. Bunch of slices long ways. And then we're gonna chop it. And we're also gonna prep some celery and some carrots. It's kind of a traditional uh, mirepoix, which gives a lot of the flavor, the depth of flavor to a recipe like this. Now, if you've never chopped carrots before, it takes a little practice. Take the carrot, cut off the ends, cut it in half, give it some cuts lengthwise, do that to both sides, cut it into maybe quarter inch slices. Then we're just gonna turn them and chop them into little pieces. I have decent knife skills as a chef, but I could never be a surgeon. Seems like a lot of carrot, but the carrot really adds a lot of sweetness to this dish that you may not get because you're not using meat. I'm gonna slice up our celery here and cut the ends off. And we're gonna do the same thing we did with the carrots. And our next ingredient to help us create that robust, delicious flavor is mushrooms. And I've got a ton of shiitake mushrooms. Shiitake mushrooms are very healthy in that they've got antioxidants in them, which may help to decrease inflammation and sometimes help your cells heal. They also are full of a lot of uh, vitamins and minerals that are great additions to your diet. So you think about this, we are substituting shiitake mushrooms in for meat. First thing we're gonna do is we are going to cut off the little tips here, put them to the side, and then just kind of break up the stems and break them in half. And then we're gonna put them in a, a blender. The other thing that's great about using uh, mushrooms in this food is mushrooms are one of the foods that are really high in uh, glutamic acid. And that glutamic acid or glutamate is really what gives food its uh, umami flavor. We're actually using two kinds of mushrooms in this dish, shiitake mushrooms, and we're using dried portini mushrooms. So we're gonna take half of those shiitake mushrooms and put them in our food processor. And then we're gonna pulse them about 10 to 15 times. All right. Perfect. You don't wanna put the food processor all the way on because then your mushroom really will be blasted into these tiny little bits that won't have any texture in your final sauce. So you wanna have some texture in this recipe. And these are dried porcini mushrooms that I've had sitting in some lukewarm water for about 45 minutes. The dried mushrooms and the liquid that they are sitting in has so much flavor to add to this dish. So there are some keys about preparing dried mushrooms. The first is you gotta let them sit with lukewarm water. The second is you have to drain them. Just gonna put them on our cutting board. Do not throw this mushroom water out. This is pure flavor gold. And we just leave a little bit in the bottom of the cup here where the dirt gets real heavy. Just give them a few rough chops. All right, who's ready to cook? Now comes the fun part. We've got our cast iron Dutch oven, one of my favorite pots to use. I'm gonna put it over some medium heat. We're gonna add some vegan butter. This is three tablespoons of vegan butter. We gotta get fat in this recipe somehow. Without the meat, 
the butter will add that. And then we've got about a tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil. Add that as well. And I'm gonna add onions. So this is our one chopped onion. And I'm gonna add this before that oil heats up and all the butter melts. All right, we're just gonna give that a little stir. Just when those onions start to turn translucent is when we're gonna add the celery and the carrots. This is my favorite part. Now we're gonna let that cook down about five, seven minutes. So just when those carrots start to get soft and sweet, we're gonna add the mushrooms in because the mushrooms don't take as long to cook and the mushrooms will soak up a lot of the oil that you've already got in your pot. We are gonna add a little more olive oil, another tablespoon or so, a pinch of kosher salt and some freshly ground pepper. Now, as the water releases from these mushrooms, you may find that the mushrooms stick a little bit to the bottom of the pot. That's okay. That's how you really develop some more flavor because we're gonna be adding a lot of liquid later and that liquid is going to bring that uh, flavorful taste off the bottom of the pan. Those kind of little brown mushroom bits will add a lot of deep taste to this dish. So those mushrooms are starting to stick a bit. I just got my spoon and scrape them off every now and again. After those mushrooms have cooked about five to seven minutes, now we're gonna add some of our liquid. The first is with milk. So traditionally in a bolognese, you may have uh, either whole milk or a little heavy cream that's added to make the sauce rich and that kind of boils down, gets sucked into the meat and into the vegetables, but we don't wanna use heavy cream. So I am going to use some oat milk. It's creamier than all of the other non-dairy milks you don't want to use coconut milk, right? Because I don't want this to taste like coconut. We got a cup of unsweetened oat milk. And at the same time, we're going to add our mushroom water. Again, the mushroom water is like our flavor bomb. And this is all going to reduce down and concentrate into these vegetables. I give that a nice little stir. Get those bits off the bottom. We're going to bring this to a medium boil and let all of that water boil off. And so the mushrooms themselves contain a lot of water, so this may take between five and 10 minutes before all the water is boiled off. You don't want to do it too fast, so kind of a medium boil is the way to go. While that milk is boiling off, we're gonna add just a splash of nutmeg. Now that that water is about boiled off, we're gonna add our wine. The wine's gonna reduce just like the other water and create more flavor as it reduces. I prefer a dry white wine for this part. You could also use a red wine if you wanted. I'll pour it in. Once that wine is just about boiled off, we're gonna add our tomatoes, and then we're gonna let it sit. The tomatoes we're using are whole peeled tomatoes. There are a lot of different types of tomatoes you can choose. These are not low sodium, which isn't too bad, especially when it's getting diluted into a, a big dish like this. I'm gonna just take a little knife here and I'm just gonna cut them up a little bit so they're not so big. And in we go. If there's any big pieces left, we can just cut them here. Give that a stir. We're gonna bring this all the way up to a boil again. So I'm gonna turn the heat up. And once that comes to a boil, we are going to turn it back down to a simmer and we are just gonna let it sit. We don't want a heavy boil because then all the water will kind of escape and the flavors won't have a chance to concentrate as well as if we do a slow boil. So this tomato sauce has now been simmering for about two, two and a half hours. And as you can see, the, the water and the wine and everything has almost boiled fully out. And we are gonna add lentils. The first reason to add lentils here is it gives the dish another texture. These are lentils that are cooked till they're almost done, maybe about 20 minutes. Those lentils will soak up a lot of that tomato flavor and they will add protein to the dish. They will add some vegetable protein to the dish, make it a little more filling. Lentils are also full of soluble fiber and soluble fiber is very important to help you maintain healthy gut health and also to help manage your blood sugars if you're diabetic. So we are gonna add three quarters of a cup of lentils and let that cook another 10 minutes. Right before our sauce is ready to eat, we're gonna start getting our pasta ready to go. Pasta noodles, I'm gonna add in. They're only gonna cook for a couple minutes. You could also use rigatoni. We don't wanna cook the noodles too long. We want them to be al dente when they come out because we're gonna finish them in the pasta sauce. Let's drain our noodles. 
We're gonna save just about a half a cup of this pasta water. It's got a little bit of starch in it. Sometimes we'll need that to help the flavors come together. And then I'm gonna add just a little bit of that reserved pasta water. We're gonna add a couple spoonfuls of the sauce in there. We're gonna let those noodles finish cooking in the sauce. So it mixes together just like a traditional bolognese. It's got tons of flavor. Beautiful little serving there. And I do like to top it with a little Parmesan cheese. We'll use the vegan Parmesan cheese just to keep this recipe totally vegan. A little bit of regular Parmesan cheese would be great on top as well. That really kicks the flavor into high gear when you take that finishing bite. Just a beautiful, beautiful meal. Mmm. That is so good.